Hey everyone, welcome back to Morning Devotions. Glad that you're here. Um, today we are in chapter 8 of the book of Matthew, and it deals with uh, the authority of Jesus and shows how he has authority over different elements. So let's go ahead and jump on in. It was Now, as I've mentioned before, especially in the first lesson, Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called synoptic gospels. In other words, they kind of collapse on top of each other. They tell the... Um, they're very good at telling the same stories, but the benefit of it is that one might have a detail that the other two don't have. So whenever you take these three stories and you put them together, yes, there's some overlapping, but there's also quite a bit of details that one might give that the other doesn't or adds additional information to create the complete story. And so it's really beautiful. So here we go. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 1. Uh, this is dealing with Jesus' authority over leprosy. Now you see, I took Matthew, Mark, and Luke. All three of these guys tell this same exact story, but they add a little bit of different details, but for the most part, it's the same. I'll read Matthew and then kind of highlight the other two. Matthew 8 and 1 through 4. When he, this is Jesus, was come down from the mountain. Now remember, he has just uh, given his sermon on the mount. Uh, great multitudes followed him. Behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean. And immediately his lepers was, leprosy was clean. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now, Mark and Luke tell this same story, but they add a few more details. Um, everything's about the same. But then at the end, Mark says, but he went out and began to publish it much. So in Matthew, it says that Jesus told him to tell no man. Mark says the same thing, but then he adds that he actually went out and began to publish it and to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. So it shows what the man did in Mark. He went out and he talked about it. And then in Luke, it says um, Jesus commanded him to go uh, to the priest as a testimony unto them, but so much more went there. The fame about him, the great multitudes came together to hear and be healed by him and their infirmities. And he withdrew himself to the wilderness and prayed. So, but Jesus has this authority over leprosy. The approach of the leper to Jesus gave him an opportunity to demonstrate his authority in yet another realm. Leprosy is viewed in the Old Testament not so much as a type of sin, but rather the uncleanness and separation that sin produces the byproduct. Uh, they were not allowed in the midst of others. They were to cry unclean, unclean in public and rent their clothes so everyone else would know, don't get near me, I'm a leper. The hopelessness of the leper situation in Old Testament times is seen in that the law made no provision for cleaning, only a provision to be declared clean. Contrary to what Jewish tradition allowed, in this story, a leper boldly approached Jesus and petitioned him for help. Contrasting Jesus to the teachers of the law, he would have fled uh, from a rabbi, but yet he runs to Jesus. There is no Old Testament precedent for this, not in the case of Moses, not in the case of Elisha. This is something new. When Matthew writes so much about referring back to the prophets, referring back to statements in Psalms, here, this is something new. And his statement, if you're willing, you can make me clean. It's not a prayer. It's a declaration of faith in the power of Jesus. The healing did not depend on Jesus's ability, though. It depended on the man's faith. How did he know who Jesus was? Had he heard of Jesus? Had he heard Jesus teach? What did he know? How did he know this man is approachable and this man can heal if he's willing? I've, how did he know? Jesus demonstrated his authority. The man was clean. And then he pointed to Jewish law. who had, He said, go show yourself to the priest. And here's the two reasons. Number one, the law required for someone who had leprosy to undergo an elaborate ritual of cleansing to be accepted again in society. And then secondly, the man was a testimony. The priest would have to investigate the man's former and present situations. And it would be a testimony of Christ because they would ask him, how did you get healed? A man named Jesus. And they would, the religious leaders would now have to face the issue of this man 
named Jesus. Then it shifts to another story in the book of, in, in chapter eight, verses five through 13, 13. And when Jesus was entered Capernaum, there came unto him a, um, a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy. So this is the centurion's servant, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come in healing. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers unto me, and I say to this one, go, and he goeth, and another come, and he cometh, and to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and he said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And the children of the kingdom shall be cast into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And the servant was healed in that self same hour. When Jesus returned to Capernaum and after addressing the multitudes, he was confronted by the centurion who looked for his help. This was a Gentile centurion, a leader of the Roman army, a man who had great respect of the Jewish people and their God. Luke, in telling this story, highlights that he loveth our nation and hath built us a synagogue. The fact that he addressed Jesus as Lord seems to indicate that he has a very high respect for Jesus. The question of the centurion's mind was not if Jesus could heal, but would Jesus heal? And Jesus expressed his willingness to go and heal the servant. The centurion's reply revealed his recognition to Christ's authority. As a man of authority, he knew that one did not have to be personally present to execute a command. The one with authority only must issue the command and is done. This man recognized the spiritual authority that Jesus had over sickness. Jesus responded, I haven't found anyone in Israel with this type of faith. Then he highlights how Gentiles will come from the east and the west to join his kingdom, but that his kingdom is, is for those who believe in him. If you don't believe, the kingdom is not for you. And so this is highlighting the authority of Jesus's words. Then it, Matthew begins to talk about the authority over sickness. I went in the Matthew, Mark, and Luke thing. We've got this same exact story happening in three different books of the Bible. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, um, or the house of Simon, Simon's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick with a fever. So Simon's wife's mother, his mother-in-law, lay sick of a fever. Luke, the physician, calls it a great fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. This is Jesus touched her hand. Um, Mark wrote that he took her by the hand. Luke wrote that he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And she arose and ministered unto them, or she fed them, she served them. And so when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and had cast out spirits with this word and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Now I want you to look over at Mark and Luke they added a um, another element. They talked about it was evening time and the diseased and the sick came and gathered at the door. But look what they also wrote in Mark 1 and 34. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases, cast out many devils, and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Luke wrote it this way. And devils came as many crying and saying, thou art the son of God. And he rebuked them and suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was the Christ. Um, Jesus left the synagogue with James and John, went to Peter's house. Peter's mother-in-law was sick. Jesus rebuked the fever, showing his authority over sickness. The news spread to others with similar elements. They came, Jesus healed them. The demon possessed that came, he healed them. And I like how Mark and Luke said he commanded the dem demons to remain quiet because they knew him. He did not, the reason why he demanded they remain quiet is because he did not want them weighing the Others who were trying to weigh the evidence, maybe even Pharisees, weigh the evidence of his miracles and opportunity to reject him because demons knew him, because he wanted his testimony to remain pure. He wanted what he had to say to remain pure, um, because what he was 
and the fact that it was this testimony was coming from questionable sources. So this demonstrates Jesus' authority over sickness. And then we have an interlude where he has two conversations with two people wanting to be disciples. When Jesus saw the great multitude about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. And a certain scribe came and said, Master, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, birds have the air, have their nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another of his disciples said to him, Lord, suffer, first, suffer me first to go bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury the dead and a certain scribe so this is a member of the jewish community or the religious community he tells jesus i'm going to follow you wherever you go jesus responded foxes have holes birds have air have nests i have nowhere to lay my head what he's telling him theologians believe that this man thought that following jesus he would re receive material riches in christ's kingdom because he came to talk about the kingdom of god jesus is letting them know that there are no material resources that accompany the kingdom because the kingdom is spiritual not um physical that we are the physical embodiment of the kingdom but he's saying it's a spiritual kingdom i didn't overcome to come to overthrow rome i came to overthrow um, the hearts of men and then another disciple said, Lord, allow me to go bury my father. Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead. It's often been said that this is a harsh saying, but many theologians believe that it's not that way. Instead, the situation may have been very different. Um, we may assume that what the men requested was permission to stay with his father till his father had died and been decently and properly buried. Now, scholars note that the word akudili, I think I, I probably butchered that, but it means be my follower rather than the other word you see on the screen, which implies drop everything and join my group. So they believe that there was a difference there. And he said, follow me or be my follower and let the, the dead bury their dead. Um, then we get into Jesus's authority over nature. And when he had entered the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. Jesus was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This story is also found in Mark 4 and Luke 8. Jesus is exhausted. He's sleeping in the ship. A great storm arises. The severity of the storm, storm produces fear. Think about this. Many of his disciples were actually fishermen. They were familiar with the storms of Galilee. Jesus first rebuked his disciples because they didn't have enough faith. Then he rebuked the winds and the waves. He rebuked two things. Jesus has now demonstrated authority over leprosy, sickness, and now over nature. But this authority gave them confidence that they can endure whatever experiences come their way. This was personal. This was fear. This was an inner emotion gripping them. And as long as Jesus is there, we can conquer fear. So this is his authority over nature. Then he shows his authority over demons. And when he was come to the other side of the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, and that no man might pass by the way. And behold, they cried out, saying, we have, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? They know what time the end is. And there, uh, they know that it's coming. And there was a good way off, a herd of many swine feeding. So the devils besought him, saying, If thou cast us out, suffer us to go away into the herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. And when they were come off, come out they went into the herd of swine and beheld the whole herd swam violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the water and they kept them and they that kept them the sheep i mean the 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 herders of the swine went their way into the city and told everything and what had befallen to the possessions of the devils. And behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they besought him that he would depart out of their coast. So this story is also found in Mark 5 and in Luke 8. 
So in the quietness that followed this storm, Jesus and his disciples come to the Gadarenes. And there they met a man who was demon-possessed. And when he recognized Jesus, he came and fell at his feet. The demon recognized Jesus, but they also recognized his authority as their judge. Whenever they said, hey, have you come before the time? He rec they recognize this is the one who's going to judge us. And in Mark, they said their name was Legion. Now, a Roman legion of army is approximately about 6,000 men. And rather than be consigned to the abyss, um, the demons asked permission to enter a herd of about 2,000 swine, and Jesus gave them permission. The man was healed, sitting clothed and in his right mind. The swine herders uh, saw and told it to the town. The town asked Jesus to leave. And the reason why is because the Jewish community didn't eat pork, but the Roman community did eat pork. And so the Jewish would sell the pork to the Romans, and it was a great economy. And here's Jesus messing up the economy. So here's my question. When Jesus pulls up the, sh the boat to the shore of your life, and he displays his authority. How will you respond? And are you willing to kiss the pigs goodbye? Jesus' authority. Jesus should have every, and you know what Jesus did? He left because Jesus only displays his authority in places that are willing. Are you willing to heal me of leprosy? Jesus, if you're willing to heal my daughter, I know you can. Jesus, don't you care that we are perishing? And, and whenever they asked Jesus to leave, he did. So what's your response when Jesus shows up and displays his authority? That's the question. Hope that you enjoyed this Bible study tomorrow, Matthew chapter 9. Bye-bye.